But this competition is being able to try new things, to experiment and to push the boundaries of specialty coffee. Now, four years ago, I started working with a producer called Café Granja La Esperanza. They have five farms in the Cauca Valley in the west part of Colombia. And they also like trying new things. And they experiment with everything. They grow many different varieties. They try out new processing methods, drying methods, fermentation styles, and they trace everything along the way. And today, we're going to taste their latest experiment. And we're going to start with the espressos, followed by the milk drinks, and we're going to finish with my signature drink. And for this, I have a little preparation to do before we can start. I'm going to infuse a lavender syrup with the zest of this odd-looking citric fruit called the Buddha hand. And this has flavors of lemon, lime, and bergamot. I'm just going to turn this on, and I'll explain this part later. And the coffee I'm using today is from one of Café Granja's farms called Cerro Azul. It's this beautiful farm located between two mountain peaks at an altitude of 1950 meters above sea level, where the coffee trees get a large amount of sun during the day, followed by a beautiful fog from the evening into the late morning. Now this high altitude gives the coffee a bright acidity, and the long period of fog makes for a cooler temperature and a higher humidity, causing slow maturation of the cherries, meaning they produce more sugars, giving this coffee its intense sweetness. For my espresso, this means it's high in acidity, balanced by a high sweetness and a low to medium bitterness. Acero Azul by itself is a pretty amazing environment for producing a great tasting coffee. But Café Granja saw bigger potential for this farm. And in 2008, they were the first ones to bring geisha trees from Panama back to Colombia to experiment with. As we all know, geisha is a very fragile variety. It has low yield, needs perfect conditions, and requires a lot of care. But still, Café Granja wanted to use this variety because of its distinctive flavor notes. It's a bit of a risk, but it ended up beautifully. And it's what gives my espresso today its complexity. I'm using 20 grams of coffee to produce 50 grams of espresso. And then we have a medium weight, a silky texture, and a beautiful grapefruit finish. I want to ask you to stir the espresso six times before drinking so they can cool down slightly and develop more flavor clarity. And you can put your spoons in the white cups afterwards. Now, judges, what you're going to taste? is orange blossom, passion fruit, and, I forgot the last one, cantaloupe melon, and enjoy. There you go, there you go. Okay, 
So now we have this beautiful geisha variety growing in one of the most perfect spots in the world. And this will be a good moment to sit back and relax, right? Not for Café Graja. They wanted to see if they could get even more flavors out of their coffee. Now, two years ago, they had experimented with something they called pre-fermentation on one of their coffees. And this gave them a syrupy sweetness that reminded them of a cognac, and they called the process XO. And now, they've done the same experiment on a small amount of the geisha from Serra Azul. So, today, we're drinking geisha XO. Now, what they did is this. Before taking it to the dryer, they fermented the coffee in cherry for 48 hours, straight after picking. And this part is tricky. The extended fermentation time means alcohol starts to form. So, to prevent it from turning sour, all of the cherries that were used had to have a sugar content of exactly 18 degree bricks, and all of the defects had to be removed, leaving a perfect but small mass of cherries. The fermentation was also carefully monitored, keeping the temperature below 25 degrees Celsius, and then the cherries were dried for 48 hours in a mechanical dryer. Now this XO process with this specific coffee resulted in those beautiful tropical notes you just tasted in the espresso. For my milk course, I'm using a ratio of one part espresso to three parts milk. And for my shots, I'm using 20 grams in and 38 grams out. And the milk I'm using is from a small dairy farm just outside of Amsterdam. They have 65 grass-fed cows, and they produce the creamiest milk I ever tasted. And this milk has a fat content of 4.4%, and by itself is already fantastic, but it also really complements the espresso, and results in flavor notes of mango, banana, and milk chocolate. And when you're done tasting the milk drink, please turn over the card in front of you and have a look at the information about the signature drink I'm going to be serving you next.
For my signature shots, I'm using the same ratio as for the espressos, 20 in and 50 out. And I'm using the same roast profile for all of my shots I made today. I roasted for eight and a half minutes to an end temperature of 202 degrees Celsius with a roast development of one minute and 20 to maximize sweetness and to balance out the bright acidity. Okay, and for the final course, I wanted to experiment using the XO process and the Geisha variety as inspiration to push the boundaries of the coffee we tasted today even further. Now the, Geisha, the XO process required coffee cherries with a sugar content of 18 degree bricks. And when I went to the farm and when I tasted these cherries, they had these beautiful sweet and soft notes of tropical fruit. And they reminded me of fresh lychee. A lychee is also great to work with as a signature drink ingredient. It has various subtle notes, complementing the espresso without overpowering the flavor of the drink. Now, the fermentation in the EXO process was the thing that really transformed the flavor of the coffee. And I wanted to capture some of that magic in my signature drink as well. So, I fermented the lychee using water kefir, which is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, similar to kombucha. I blended the filtered fresh lychees and I fermented them with the kefir in a closed jar for 22 hours, keeping the temperature below 18 degrees Celsius. And I chilled it afterwards to prevent the forming of alcohol. I'm just gonna filter out the kefir. And of this ferment, I'm going to use 24 grams. Now the lactic acid formed during fermentation is going to give the signature drink body and the lychee more acidity to balance out the sweetness of my next ingredient. With my second ingredient, I wanted to highlight more of those typical bright and floral notes often found in the geisha variety. And I found that the Buddha hand and the lavender are great representations of these. Over here, I have a lavender syrup and I've infused it with half a gram of the Buddha hand zest by stirring it at high speed using this magnetic mixer. I'm just going to filter out this zest and of this infusion, I'm going to use six grams. Now this combination is going to transform the flavor of the other ingredients. And I'm going to bring this all together in this siphon using a nitrogen cartridge which is going to combine all the ingredients and is going to give the drink a beautiful creamy mouthfeel. So, what I've created here is two new flavors, cinnamon and blood orange. I'm going to serve you this drink at 30 degrees Celsius because at this temperature, the flavors will be most pronounced. First, you get the aroma of cinnamon. And then before taking your first sip, I would like to ask you to swirl the glass briefly. In the first sip, you'll taste more of that cinnamon, followed by a little bit of the lavender from the syrup. And in the second sip, you'll taste blood orange. behind the coffee.
machine you choose or defines what you can do with coffee. If you want to be big, you need to 